Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again to Seattle University Women's Volleyball here on Stretch Internet. Again, coming to you today from the Cal Athletic Center, a conference matchup against the Senators of Davis and Elkins College out of Elkins, West Virginia. The Lady Jackets five and eight on the year, winning their, excuse me, yes, five and eight as I look at the sheet there, winning their conference game last night against Alderson brought us in grand fashion as we look. Sweeping Alderson brought us with uh, just one set going to the Battlers number three, 25, 22, 25, 23, 23, 25, 25, 13. I'm Jim Clark, glad to call the game for you this afternoon, joined by my wife, Teresa Clark. And Teresa, always important to continue strong play, especially at home and more importantly, in the conference. And, it, and you're absolutely right. And sometimes after you have like a really big crowd and you have a big win on a Friday night, and then you turn around and come right back out Saturday afternoon. Oftentimes your team has spent their emotional energy on Friday night and they have not uh, refocused by the time they come Saturday morning. So hopefully that's not the case. Um, hopefully they don't come out and play flat. Um, you have a team coming in in uh, Davis and Elkins who uh, very much has um, uh, their eyes wide open as a new coach is trying to figure out this conference. So I don't know that he's ever seen Cedarville in action. So it should be interesting. Well, before we go any further, let's join public address announcer Darren Miller for some pregame announcements that will include the invocation, the national anthem, and then the introductions of both teams.
Teresa, there are the introductions and the lineups. And as we look down below us to our right, the Davis and Elkins College Senators, their best player, Elizabeth Estes, a 6'1 junior out of Mo Fort Mojave, Arizona, wearing a boot on her left ankle. So that, excuse me, right ankle as I look at her now, that could be a huge factor for the Senators today. And she's not even walking gingerly on that. She's hobbling around. And so that's a fresh injury. And she's in the huddle right now, and she is pumping up this team. She's the one talking. Coach is on the sideline and she's saying, this is what you have to do. And uh, that shows her real leadership. Even though she might not be on the court today, she's gonna lead from the, from the sideline. And oftentimes when you have a key player who is injured, it says to the team, everybody around her has to step up their game. So we'll see if they're able to do that. As we said, Cedarville five and eight, one and zero, oh, starting off their trek towards a fourth straight GMAC championship after defeating Alderson Broadus, the Senators 1 in 10. They lost last night at Ursuline, and that is where the Battlers of Alderson Broadus are playing this afternoon. But their scores aren't like a wipeout at all. I mean, they were they got a set from them. They're 1 in 3, but it was 25-20, 25-19. They took a game, um, the 25-19, and then they had an, an 18. So, I mean, they were in 20-20, you know, so they were right in there. It wasn't like a real blowout, so that, that speaks highly of them. Seventh meeting all time between the Senators and the Lady Jackets. Last year they met on September 27th. The Lady Jackets won that one three sets to one down in Elkins, West Virginia. But we're set to go here in this GMAC contest between Cedarville and Davis and Elkins. Kristen Cardwell from the left side of the net starts things off on the serve, and that'll be a point off the bat right there, missing that ball, trying to get over the net. And Cedarville has the first point. Wilkerson, Barkley, Shelton on the front line, and that ball hangs on the net and falls on Cedarville's side of the net. One to one, we're tied. Interesting, I was gonna talk pregame a little bit about cleaning up the serving game. Didn't get that comment out. Doesn't matter, already happened. Last night, the Lady Jacks missed eight serves against Alderson Broadus out of 97 attempts, and there's a missed serve right back at you by the Senators, Jesse Kearns into the net, 2-1 Cedarville. And this serve certainly do not help your momentum to get going. Now Abby Shelton will tow the back line and sends it across the net. Here comes the set left side attack by Alexa Samara, and that is a net violation called against Cedarville. We're tied at two.
Hard to tell about the energy level on either side of the court. It's just been a miss serve, miss serve, and not a whole lot of volleying happening yet. Hopefully that'll happen here. Pratt, Becker, Shelton on the back line. Pratt passes it to Cardwell. She'll go back side to Barkley. Nice dig on the center side by Jacobson. A nice save by Shelton. Now Pratt with her attack is dug on the back line by Davison Elkins. Another attempt left side by Devin Sosi. And Pratt goes up, partially blocked at the net, dug on the back line by the centers. Roll shot near side by Sosi Cardwell. Quick attack to Wilkerson, blocked down beautifully by the Senators. And a great volley both ways right now. Looks like they're waking up a little bit. Sosi, the dig by Pratt. Set by Jesse Kearns, tip shot into the net, point Cedarville. Well played there by both squads. And like you said, that was a good volley, much better. They're starting to get a little bit of rhythm on both sides of the net. And uh, that was a good thought by number 10 on D&E. Uh, that would have been a good uh, offensive tool. She just didn't clear the net. Becker on the serve for Seattle. Here comes a near side set by Sosi, and she'll just tap it to the left of Cardwell for the point. And that's exactly what she wanted to do on the last uh, volley. Um, she saw that spot and wanted to tip it. Cedarville didn't pick up that that's what was happening, and they need to adjust to that. Kayla Godwin serving for the centers, leads the team in aces with 14. She puts it in play now. Barkley just has to keep something going. She sends it over. Here's a near side attack from Sosi, dug by Becker on the back line. And Barkley again trying to just get it over the net, hits the net, and it falls down on the Lady Jacket side, and the Senators have their first lead. The Senators right now are playing with more enthusiasm on the court than Cedarville. Cedarville seems to be just going through the motions. They can't play this game that way. And now we look at the scoreboard above and must have been a point for Cedarville. They are serving. Christian Reynolds has checked into the lineup. Not sure exactly what may have happened there. Official down on the far side of the floor, checking there at the scorer's table to straighten things out. Cedarville four, Davis and Elkins three in set one. So the freshman Kristen Reynolds will attempt the serve out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, just barely across the net. Here's a near side attack coming from Sosi, blocked at the line by the Lady Jackets. A dig there by Shelton Cardwell. She'll go outside to Pratt, cross court, and another net violation called against Zoe Craig of Davis and Elkins, 5-3 Cedarville. Both teams have had uh, in the net plays, and this is pretty early in a, a match for that to happen. Reynolds sends that one a couple feet beyond the back line for the miss serve. The Ren Reynolds, the freshman, at 84% on the year, 5-4 Cedarville. Here comes a serve by the setter, Zoe Craig. Cardwell back set to Pratt, blocked at the net by the Senators. Cardwell will try Cricky in the middle. And a nice quick set and quick attack is dug by the Senators. And now another, okay, it's gonna be a double hit violation called against Cedarville. And we're tied at five. And both teams need to clean up their game, but Cedarville's had violations, two, um, two violations in the last four plays. And so that's not how you uh, want to, to uh, compete. You need to get your game and your rhythm on. Becker on the serve receive, outside set to Cricky off the block. One hand save there by Sasha Johnson of Davis and Elkins. That ball will find space in the corner just to the right of Abby Shelton in the Senators now lead 6-5. And what we talked about in pregame, uh, when you have a uh, your best player out, a lot of times those around step up their game and it looks like right now that's what's happening. Pratt, tough pass right there on the serve receive. This ball's up into the rafters and Reynolds will just get it across the net in play. Tip shot by Johnson, dug by Lady Jackets. Roll shot by Shelton will be good. And as you were watching that, I think you were able to see d &E backed off, ready for Abby to swing, but back attack, and she rolled shot and sent it just short of them, and that was a really smart play by Abby. Now Chrissy Pratt, the dangerous jump server, goes to the back line. This one can be passed up by the Senators. 
Back row attack coming from Kendall Jacobson. Now Lady Jackets on the attack. Shelter of the near side. Way too much power on that. Hit goes out of bounds. Far deep corner. 7-6 Senators. Abby was a little late on her swing on that one. If you if you see, she she hit that on the way down instead of getting on top of it to send it straight down. And that forced her to, to hit it out of bounds. Serving for Davison Elkins is number two, Michaela Touche. She puts the ball in play, and Rachel Cricky will deliver the kill in the far deep corner to tie it up at seven points apiece. Cricky played the block really well there. She was able to get around them and able to send it deep into the defense, and uh, well played. She looked and saw the empty spot and hit it. This is Cricky on the serve for Cedarville. Left side attack coming from Alexa Samara. Back row attack from Kristen Reynolds. Fairly easy dig for Craig. Now the attack from the right side by Johnson is passed up by Cedarville. This is Shelton again from that left corner. And this time she will be credited with a kill. A diving touche could not get to it. 8-7 Cedarville. And just like you mentioned in the, uh, the pregame uh, chat, Abby was on fire last night and had her career high kills. And so they're going right at her today and she's coming through. Craig on the back set. This is Johnson attempting the block was Wilkerson and Shelton can't get it done. We're tied at eight. Our eighth tie of set number one. And one of the things Cedarville needs to improve on is their block. They need to close it and they need to keep it stiff so it sends it right back down on the other side of the court, not in front of themselves. Wilkerson blocked on the right side by the senders. This is Shelton from the opposite corner of the front line for the kill, 9-8 Cedarville. That was a great angle that uh, Cedarville was able to look and, and adjust to the defense and send it so it was out of reach, well played. Cardwell now back on the rotation to serve for Cedarville, her team up, 9-8. There's the pass by Libero, Ellie Drain, and over the block of Cedarville, a point given to Sasha Johnson on the kill. And again, DNE was able to adjust to Cedarville's block and get over it and uh, send it in the hole behind it. Served by Jesse Kearns. Cardwell has to track down a tough pass right there. Pratt from the back corner is dug by the Senators. Here comes the kill attempt from Samara. That would be good. And Cedarville's defense is not talking, communicating, or moving well, and they're leaving lots of open spots. I'm sure Coach Walters will address that his first chance he gets. 10-9 Senators on the serve again is Jesse Kearns, and that'll be an ace for the junior out of Waverly, West Virginia, and a two-point advantage for Davis and Elkins. And remember, d &E is adjusting to a different lineup without their best hitter. Becker on the serve received. Cardwell, back row attack from Shelton, and unable to keep that ball in play. Jesse Kearns give another kill to Abby Shelton. Barkley, Wilkerson, Pratt on the front line. Cardwell, Becker, and Shelton on the back line. Abby serving. 18 aces on the year. That ball's tracked down. It'll be a roll shot. Not able to get it over the net as Jesse Kearns, and we're tied at 11. Shelton on the serve. Back set by Craig. Blocked at the net by Wilkerson and Pratt. Point Cedarville. They'll take the lead right back. And that's what we were talking about earlier as far as a block. That block was closed. That block was stiff. That block sent it straight down. And more than that, directed it away from defense. Well done. One point lead. Shelton again on the serve. Tough play right there to handle by Touche. Roll shot by the Senators. Shelton on the dig. Here's Cardwell. Outside attack to Pratt. Would be good. Right over the block attempt of Kayla Godwin. And as much as we've talked about Abby and her hitting game, another improvement I've seen this season is her passing game. And that was a perfect example of that. Abby uh, passed that from the back row. That was a great serve receive. She passed it right to the hands of Cardwell. Cardwell was able to set it in the and was able to make the offense run quickly and accurately. And so that was probably the best play we've seen on Cedarville's side so far this set. 13-11, Lady Jackets up by two points here in set number one. 
And Coach Kylie Carrington takes her first time out as you see a replay coming up here from just a play or so ago. And here's what I want you to see, what we were just talking about. Uh, Dee and Neal send it over, but look at that pass from Abby right in the hands of Cardwell. Cardwell then is able to run the offense. You have all your line going up for it and uh, confuse the defense of D and E. And what a great kill on Cedarville's side. Love to hear from you if you're out there watching this afternoon, a Senator fan or a Lady Jacket fan, send us an email, sportsinfo at cedarville.edu. Send us a tweet on Twitter at CU Jackets. We heard from a few folks last night. Let's cover three states. We heard from the Barkley family out there in San Diego, California, from the Wilkerson's, their faithful viewers up in Wisconsin. And Walhead, we had a special friend of Kristen Reynolds, a baseball player at Lee University, checking in with us from Cleveland, Tennessee. So we appreciate those shout outs and comments last evening. Love to hear from you. We're back to the action now with Shelton, another serve. Slide attack, put down and a dig by Shelton will fall and find space just to the left of a diving libero, number 11, Ellie Drain, Point Cedarville. And when you're passing, you don't really want to send it over the net, but sometimes that happens just because of the force of the hit and uh, Dini was not ready for the return on one. Left hand shot put over by Samara. Pratt from the left side, little roll shot, and a net violation called against the setter, Zoe Craig. And now it's a 15-11 lead for Cedarville. Shelton continuing to serve. Passed up by Touche, and she'll get it back. Here comes a free ball attempt. Shelton at the net to Cardwell. Quick attack to Wilkerson, a tip shot over the block of the Senators, kept alive. And there's a great dig again by Shelton. Bodies falling all over the floor. And now the pass. The Senators on the attack. Little chip shot on the right side by Godwin and put it right back down. I believe that was Chrissy Pratt. Mm -hmm. That was a solo block by Chrissy. And not only did she go up, but she directed it. And we talked about that earlier. Well done. 16-11 again serving as Shelton. Five-point advantage for Cedarville. Trying to pull away here in set one. Shelton on the pass, Cardwell, will she, where will she go with it? To Workerson in the middle, kept alive by Davis and Elkins. Now Samara on the near side, and a net violation called against Cedarville. Alyssa Barkley will give the point to the Senators. And right now, a lot of the reason for the net violations is because both teams are playing very close to the net. The passes are coming too close to the net, which is causing the setters to have to set it too close to the net and that's what's gonna be the result. We need, they both teams need to clean up their passes to their setter away from the net. Here comes the serve attempt by Kendall Jacobson of d &E. Cardwell back set to Barkley, tip shot. She'll put it right inside the 10 foot line. Unable to get to it was Kendall Jacobson, point Cedarville. We're seeing a little bit too much of the dink game and uh, that's really not what um, you usually want to have. So let's see if we can't get some hits in a Be different way. <laughs> Becker, a high floater serve, put down on the near side on the attack by Devin Sosi. Cedarville now trying to make something happen. Shelton out of the back row, dug there by Kearns. Becker, she'll send it near side. Barkley goes up for the kill attempt, dug there by Craig of the Senators. Here comes another attack, cross court. Becker with the dig, now Cardwell. She'll go outside to Pratt with the kill and it'll be into the net point D and E. DNA's block uh, number one, uh, Zoe Craig, was very much right there and uh, uh, in the face of uh, Pratt, and she was able to block her. Zoe Craig, five foot ten, as the setter for DNA. That's a pretty nice height advantage for a setter at this level. Little tip shot put across by Craig. Now Barkley again from the right side gets it blocked. She keeps it alive. Now Cricky trying to make something happen, and the Senators again some scrappy defense. Becker on the pass, Cardwell, quick attack to Cricky, and that'll be a kill for the junior middle hitter. It looks like Cedarville starting to wake up a little bit. They played really kind of, kind of uh, slow motion, a little bit flat at the beginning of this set, but now it looks like they're starting to get a little bit of rhythm going and a little bit of energy coming in. Reynolds into the lineup to serve. Cardwell, Pratt, and Cricky in the front line, and Kristen Reynolds will get credited with the ace serve, number three, getting it done for Cedarville. 19-13.
College volleyball, best of five sets, up to 25, must win by two points. Nice pass to Craig, tip shot with the left hand will be good by Devin Sosi for d and &E. 19-14 is our score. Setter Zoe Craig on the serve. She's a sophomore from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Pratt on the attack attempt, partially blocked and kept in play. This is Johnson. Doug attempt by Reynolds. Can't keep it alive. Point Davis and Elkins. And the nice thing about that play, D and E was actually a little bit off their set and their their middle hitter were not in sync, but she's still able to uh, keep it alive. But it threw the defense of Cedarville off. Shelton blocked out of the back row. She recovered and putting it out of play. Sharice Mitchell seeing the action for the first time. Deals point number 20 to Cedarville here in set one. Pratt back to serve, the jump serve. Sends it across. That ball sails out of bounds. Give the ace serve to Chrissy Pratt. Twenty-one fifteen. Pratt looking to add to the lead. This one passed up. Craig will trap, track it down. Near side attack, way out of bounds. On the kill attempt by Sasha Johnson. Twenty-two fifteen, and uh, looks like Coach Kylie Carrington of DNE will take her second and final timeout of the set to try and stop the momentum of Cedarville. They put three straight up on the board. They lead at twenty-two fifteen. Two of those were hits that went out of bounds, and right now DE &E is starting to get a little bit frustrated, and they're just starting to swing, but they're not starting to look at angles and trying to play um, uh, with the defense. They're just going up and swinging, and and I'm sure that the coach is, um, Coach Kylie is saying, um, that's not how we're going to play. You got to get look at the angles that are available to you, and, and you swing that way. Follow through with your swing. Don't just hammer at it. And so I'm sure they're going to come out and clean that up a little bit. Cedarville has to be ready for that. They have to adjust to it and say, okay, we got those, uh, but they're going to clean that up, so be ready to play good defense. Back to the action. Again, Chrissy Pratt on the serve. Her team now up by seven points, closing in on the 25 point level to secure victory. Here's a set at the net, and Craig cannot connect with the outside attack of Davis Nelkins 23 15. And what happened there was actually uh, the outside hitter came cl too close to the middle action, so there was a miscommunication, and the setter sent it out where she normally is for her swing. Pratt on the miss serve gives the point to the Senators 23 16. Kayla Touche will come into the lineup and serve, a junior out of Cypress, Texas. This will be Becker, tough pass for Card, will it get you instead? Cricky steps in and out, three ball put over the net by Reynolds. Here's the pass and the set by Craig, a nice quick middle attack put down by Sharice Mitchell, the freshman from Indianapolis. Makes it 23-17. Cedarville still leading by six. And that's a play that they've talked about and they've practiced, and so they got excited when they saw it happen. Touche floats that one about a foot off the back corner as Becker watches it go out of bounds. 24-17, set point, and it's Rachel Creaky to serve. I like the way Becker followed that all the way to the end line. She was there and watching and making sure it went out, and it did. High, high floater serve lands inside the 10 foot line, and the Senators do get it across. But Wilkerson, all kinds of open area before her, and she puts it down with some power. 25 17, Lady Jackets will win set number one here against Davis and Elkins. Wilkerson's just adjusted to college ball so fast. You don't even look at her as a freshman. You see her, and she plays with such confidence and such authority, and just um, her timing as well. She's hitting, she's blocking, and it's just really good to see. Um, you'll see her in this play as, as uh, the beginning of the last play begins with that serve, but you'll see what, what I'm talking about with Wilkerson. Uh, if you were walking in this gym, you would never, ever think that she was a freshman. You see it right here, come back over. Cedarville will set it up, and there she goes. 
and she just finds that open hole and she sends it right down. And uh, that's what I mean. She plays well, she sees the court, and uh, she's already adjusted to college ball at a high level. Abby Shelton leading the way after set number one with five kills for Cedarville. On the other side of the net, it's Alexa Samara and Devin Sosi. Four for Sosi, three for Samara. Lady Jack is hitting at 30%. The Senators at just 12%. David and Elkison need to uh, get a block game going against Cedarville. They need to get their hands in their face if they want to slow down the uh, attack percentage. Uh, they've got to get in a rhythm. Um, right now their attack percentage is a, 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 a .125 where Cedarville is doing a, a 306. Uh, Cedarville has two and a half blocks, but really um, when you don't have offense coming at you, it's hard to block. A couple chances they have, they weren't quite ready, but they did manage to get two and a half blocks. Cedarville needs to work on their block game. Um, this season so far, I've seen that they're very up and down with that. Sometimes they're really on, and sometimes they're just not consistent with it. And so that's something that I'm sure that they are addressing and working on. One of the other things that, uh, a move that uh, Coach Walters made a few matches ago, going from the 6-2 offense to the 5-1, and uh, still adjusting to that, are the Lady Jacks with Christian Cardwell now taking over most of the setting duties you have all preseason in the first matches of the year and hitters get used to different setters and now Cardwell stepping in totally taking that role still in the work in progress level well and sometimes that's very normal for a freshman setter it's, it's hard for a freshman setter to just jump right in from high school to uh, the college level and uh, be real effective the setting game changes drastically, especially when you go from a high school level to a Division II level. And so um, those adjustments uh, will come. I, I'm sure they will come, but, but for now, the 5-1 uh, seems to be working for Cedarville. This is the fourth of an eight-game, eight-match homestand for Cedarville, as they've already defeated Charleston and Urbana and Alderson Broadus last night. And after today, still Four matches left on the homestand. About ready to start set number two. It'll be the Senators of Davis and Alkin serving to get things going. On the ladies, Lady Jacka's side of the net, it'll be Wilkerson, Barkley, Pratt, Shelton, Becker, and Cardwell. And libero Ellie Drain, a senior from Sherwood, Oregon, will serve well short at the 10-foot line. Becker steps in. Here's Shelton out of the back row. Hits that ball cross court, but out of bounds. Point D and E. And Shelton needs to adjust her shoulders on that one. She just pulled too much to the right side of her body in the court and sent it out of bounds. Here's the set from Cardwell, near side attack from Barkley off the block and good for the point for the senior, the lone senior on this year's team. That last play is something that as a former coach, I love to see. All three hitters were back. All three hitters came in with an approach. And so the defense does not know exactly which, which uh, hitter is going to be used. Johnson blocked at the net by Pratt, kept in play by Becker, sent over by Cardwell. Now the Senators on the attack. Here's a slide blocked again at the net by Pratt. And that ball will be good. Abby was there, but just thought it might be going out of bounds, but it hits the floor, two to one, D and E. We'll get our first look at Haley Murray, wearing number nine. She's a senior from Warrington, Virginia. She'll serve it for Coach Kylie Carrington. Cardwell to Barkley. Cross court, can't be kept in play. We're tied at two. And that's what you do um, when you are playing and you see a team bring in a new player. You welcome them to the court by hitting right at them and see what they're made of. And so smart play by Cedarville side, send it to the new, new kid on the block. And now Haley Murray doing some setting on the Lady Jackets serve. Here's an attack from the middle, partially clipped at the net, and a deep shot is dug there by Shelton. Passes it to Cardwell, Pratt from the left side, partially blocked by the Senators. 
And a touch call by both Barkley and Cricky will give the point to D&E on the honor call. And they both looked at each other and they both realized both of them had touched it. They were all both ready to call their touch and they both did touch the ball on that. Kendall Jacobson will serve for d &E, now leading three to two in set number two. This one's floated across Shelton down to get it. Quick set to Cricky from the middle, dug on the back line by Drain. Pratt left side, right between a couple defenders of the Senators were tied at three. Seville's uh, play started with a great pass. It was a great pass right in the hands of Cardwell. She was able to use her offensive and call the play and uh, get it done. Angela Becker last night against AB handled 41 serves, just one error. Left side attack, cross court, dug there by Becker. This will be a set by Cricky. Roll shot by Pratt will be good, just in front of Ellie Drain of d and &E, 4-3 Cedarville. And I like the way Pratt played that. She went up with her approach and her swing like she was going to swing deep. Defense pulled back, she saw the hole, and she roll shot it and dumped it in the middle. Justin Reynolds, another miss serve, will send it right back to d and &E. That's miss serve number four this afternoon for Cedarville. Now Kayla Godwin on the serve. Here's the set from Reynolds, put across by Cedarville. Near side attack, Chrissy Pratt, dug on the back line by Davis and Elkins. Left side kill attempt by Sosi, blocked down by Cedarville. Katie serve into the lineup with the block. It looks like Kristen Reynolds will be setting here now for a while. She's in the rotation in place of Cardwell. Yes, she is. She stayed in the, when she rotated the front row, she stayed in and she's now setting and we're playing a 5-1 with her. And that's a good, good uh, opportunity for her as a freshman to make some adjustments. Mitchell blocked at the front line of Cedar. This is a cross court kill. Give it to number 10, Dave, Devin Sosi. Becker couldn't get to it. We're tied at five. And talking to Coach Walters, one of the reasons he was uh, going to go with the 6-2 was just to have a taller block at the front row. Um, but uh, finding out that a 5-1 is probably a better rhythm. And so we'll see what happens now. Katie Sir on the kill attempt off a set from Reynolds. Kept in play by the Senators. Here comes Shelton from the left side, blocked at the net. Kept in play with the elbow by Cricky. Now Shelton just puts it across. And that'll be a point Cito as the set from Craig just could not connect with the middle attack of Johnson Point Lady Jackets. Wilkerson Sir, Shelton on the front line. It'll be Rachel Cricky serving. Zoe Craig on the set. Johnson goes back to the corner. That'll be good. Just to the left of Chrissy Pratt. We're tied at six. Dini has some nice um, hitters in the front row with some good swings and when they get a, a good set they're able to uh, be very effective. And again a reminder they're playing without their best attacker six foot one junior Elizabeth Estes and a net violation called against the Lady Jackets on the set. Kristen Reynolds will give a point to the Senators. Served by Michaela Touche, tough pass for Reynolds to handle. She just gets an arm on it and Shelton makes something out of nothing. Middle attack put across, dug there by Reynolds. Now Shelton, Rebecca and Sir run into each other. That'll be a point for Davis and Elkins. A little lack of communication happening on Cedarville's front row right now, but they're talking and they're cleaning it up. Another serve by Touche. This time is passed up by Pratt. Reynolds, near side attack to Shelton off the double block attempt of Johnson and Mitchell. And that's what you need to do. Abby rotated to the front row and you want to get put it in her hands because right now she's one of the most effective tools Cedarville has. And now Cardwell will check in, replacing Reynolds. And she'll serve it across the net. That'll go out of bounds on the Near side down below us to our left, 9-7 D&E.
Ellie Drain on the serve. Pratt steps in to get the pass to Cardwell at the 10 foot line. Shelton had all kind of room right through the block attempt of Godwin and Samara for the point. Abby just sails. She gets up and she can, she has what we call hang time as she just sails and she's able to direct and do it with power. So fun to watch her play. Kill number seven on the afternoon by Shelton as she sails that serve out of bounds, giving a point right back to the Senators who now lead it 10 to eight. Miss serve number five of the afternoon after the Lady Jackets last night missing eight serve attempts. Becker on the path to Cardwell. Middle attack is blocked from Wilkerson. Shelton out of the back row will send it out of bounds. And now DE has their largest lead here in the set, 11 to 8. Cardwell back set. Barkley, far deep corner, cross court is good for the kill. Eleven and nine, DNE as Angela Becker serves it for Cedarville. This will be a back row attack coming from Alexa Samara. Cardwell now on the set to Pratt, blocked at the net by DNE. Deep hit will be good by Rachel Cricky. Point, Lady Jackets. And Rachel Cricky got the ball on the second touch, and she just decided I'm going to send it over and send it deep, and that was a very smart move, and it was effective. Haley Murray on the set, dug on the back line, the attack from Dini by Becker, and a powerful kill by Chrissy Pratt. And we are tied at 11. And Coach Kylie Carrington, after that kill from Chrissy Pratt, will take her first of two timeouts here in set number two. We're tied at 11 after the Lady Jackets captured set number one, 25-17. And Coach Kylie took that time out to try to stop the momentum that Cedarville has had, clicking off the last three points, getting the tie. She, her team was in rhythm, playing really well, and uh, was ro rolling ahead and, and clipping right along. And Cedarville then came out, started uh, changing things up. Uh, Cardwell came back in to set with the, her setters, who are they're just very comfortable with her right now. Uh, doesn't mean they'll always be that way, but um, they were able to get their offensive rhythm back on track and we're able to tie it up. And so she's trying to change the momentum and get her team back into this game. Both teams break their huddle. It'll be another serve coming from the junior, Angela Becker. Tied at 11 points apiece. Becker at 93% on the year from the serving line. There's a big block on the middle by Cricky and Barkley. The ball will fall. Out of bounds, points to Cedarville. They'll take the lead right back at 12 to 11. And that's what we talked about between this, uh, the first and this set. Um, that Cedarville's block has got to be more consistent and more effective, and that's a result, and that is a picture of what we were talking about. Craig tips it over. Net violation be called against Alyssa Barkley, giving a point back to d &E, tied at 12. Seventh tie of set number two. Ball sent across the net by Kendall Jacobson. Cricky with an attack is dug on the back line. Here's a shot defended by Shelton and now put across by Pratt. And that's an easy put down right there by Devin Sosi of the Senators who now lead 13-12. I saw what Pratt was trying to do. She was trying to get a, a pass over to the outside hitter, but it just went too far, uh, too close to the net and then ended up going over. Barkley on the back set from Cardwell is dug by the Senators. Pratt will try it, going cross court. Again, defended there by Davis and Elkins. Near side attack by Craig. That's Shelton as she rolls on the back line to keep it in play. And now, again, good volley by both teams, but it's going to end right there on the double block from Cricky and Barkley. 
I will say this, Cricky's gotten better and better as she entered uh, the Cedarville Volleyball Program as a freshman. She's gotten stronger and stronger at the front row and become more confident. She's swinging better and she, right there she's blocking better. So it's really fun to see the great improvement and how effective she is and what a tool she is for this team. Cricky, the leading blocker on the team with 37 block assists this year thus far. She'll try it again on the quick attack from the middle, dug there by the Senators. Now a roll shot from the near side by Craig, a dig by Becker. Reynolds in there to set. She goes outside to Cricky, blocked by the Senators' front line. Now we'll try Sir on that far side, and a little tip shot will be good. Touched over there on the far side by Jacobson. Give Katie Sir the kill. And this is why Coach Walder said she, he wanted to run the 6-2. And so now that he's switched to the 6-2 in this set, he's trying to make sure that he has a solid wall Good blockers all in the front row. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with height. Um, when you have shorter setters, uh, they, they just can't get quite up like your tall uh, hitters. And so he's giving it a try. And so far, it's been effective. This served by freshman Christian Reynolds gives a point to DNE and going right back. Thank you very much. The Senators have a missed serve off the hands of Kayla Godwin, 15 14 Cedarville, leading in set two. And Chrissy Pratt will try and zero in a jump serve right here. Left side attack from Sochi would be good. A diving Becker can't get to it. Beautifully done there by the Senators. The Senators aren't giving up. They're looking at it and saying, we're right in this and we're going to stay in it. And so uh, they have tied it up, like you said, and uh, they with an effective offensive tool. Tenth tie the set at 15 apiece. This is Pratt. Excuse me, Shelton off the set from Reynolds, blocked by the center. Now Katie Sir will try it. She's dug on the back line by Ellie Drain. Quick middle attack. Wow, that was put down with some power by freshman Sharice Mitchell to give the Senators a one-point advantage. And she has some power. When you when she gets a good set and she gets in the air and the timing is right, she's hard to defend. And that was a, a, a great illustration of uh, her abilities. Mitchell with her third kill and another miss serve. This time it's from Zoe Craig of Davis and Elkins. We're tied at 16. As a former coach, I just really got frustrated with miss serves. 11 miss serves in the set, or in the match, I should say, thus far. Seven by Cedarville, four by DE. Cricky now will try it. She'll go far back corner out of bounds. Point right back to DE. Kayla Touche now to serve for the Senators. Shelton on the pass to Reynolds. Quick set to Wilkerson. That'll be a kill for the freshman. Unable to keep it in play was Ellie Drain. We're tied at 17. Cardwell checks in. She'll serve. Take over setting duties. Here comes the set by Craig, left side attack put down by Samara, dug on the back line by Cedarville, this is Cardwell, near side to Shelton off the block, and passed up by the Senators, here is Johnson, she's partially blocked at the net, Pratt with the dig, now Barkley right side goes far back line, and that's gonna be just off the back line for the point to the Senators. Barkley saw, saw that the defense of d &E had pulled up, so the back area was wide open, and she tried to go for it, and and send it deep, and it was really close, but just a little too far. Short serve by Drain, stepping in to get it as Becker. Now a slide attack by Wilkerson, and that was just misfiring on both ends of the pass, the set, and the attack by the freshman. And it's 1917 DNE. Another very, very short serve inside the 10 foot line. This time, Cardwell back set to Shelton. A one hand dig by Drain. Roll shot, left side, put across by Samara. Becker on the pass, outside to Barkley, and that'll be outside the antenna point. Davis and Elkins, and Coach Walters will stand to his feet as his team now down by three, 20 to 17, will take his first of two timeouts. Uh, and I saw Alyssa Barkley uh, a little frustrated with herself uh, after that one. That's, that's two or three um, uh, 
uh, missed shots that she's had where she's gone a little deep or she hasn't been able to keep it in bounds and so forth. And so um, she's, she's taking that on personally. She's already showing her personal frustration, which I liked as a coach because it said, you don't have to say a thing, they got it. And they'll take care of it mentally and they'll get it done and they'll regroup themselves. And so I'm sure that's happening. Well, Teresa is a former coach, Lady Jackets. You always wanted your team to be the first one to get to that 20-point level. It just gives you a boost of confidence. And right now, in set number two, it is the Senators leading Cedarville 20 to 17, trying to even up the match at one set apiece. When you get into the 20s, it means we're really close. They only have five points, and they've got this, whereas Cedarville now has eight points. And so um, we'll see who comes out of this timeout ready to go and finish this set. Another serve coming from Ellie Drain. Again, very short inside the 10-foot line. This is Reynolds back set to Shelton, trying to make something happen, and Abby will get the kill. And much needed after three straight points by the Senators. Now it's 2018. And Abby goes to the back line to serve. And Cedarbo hasn't gone to Abby the last couple plays, and so it was her turn, and uh, she made it happen. Craig on the set, quick middle attack, blocked down by Wilkerson and Barkley. And Johnson can't keep it in play across the net, points Cedarville. So right out of the timeout, two quick points by Cedarville. And that block right there with Barkley in the front row instead of a setter is why a 6-2 is effective when you've got this kind of block at the net. Another serve from Shelton Craig to Johnson, blocked at the net by Wilkerson. Little roll shot left side, there's the dig by Pratt. Pratt gets it back, she buries a kill, and a nice attempt by the Senators, but nothing doing, we're tied at 20. And Coach Kylie Carrington of Davis and Elkins will see the momentum shifting back to Cedarville, so she'll take her second and final timeout. And you're exactly right, she's trying to stop the momentum. Cedarville has come out of that timeout, clicked off three points very quickly, and so uh, she's like, okay, I've gotta stop this momentum and change a little bit. Um, she is adjusting to the block. They've, she's got to tell her hitters in the front row, you need to make sure that you are doing all that you can to um, adjust that block. You'll see right here that pass going up. You'll see that they were trying to get effective, but look at that block, and that's what we were talking about. When you go to a 6-2, you've got three strong, effective blocks in the front row. Again, Cedarville block goes up, and defense behind it is ready for that, and now we're going to see it go down. Right now, here we go, and Chrissy Pratt sends it down. Pa Chrissy Pratt uh, passed the set, and then uh, the setter acknowledged her and said, great pass, let me give it right back to her and let her hit it. Chrissy Pratt now with seven kills on the afternoon. Shelton with eight to lead the Cedarville attack. Barkley adding five, and Shelton serving. We're tied at 20. Cedarville trying to take control back here in set two. There's a big, big by Shelton off the attack from the center. Pratt will try it and she'll put that one down with some power right in front of Ellie Green and Cedarville now leads it 21-20. That was a great set. It was right over to uh, Pratt's hands and it was done quickly and so quickly the block wasn't able to get set and that was a, a great kill. Craig sets it outside and that'll be a point Cedarville off the attack from Samara, 22-20. We can't say enough, this is what a 6-2 does for you. It allows you to have a better blocking game, and so we'll see what happens. Tough serve by Shelton. It's handled by the Senators. This will be a free ball out of the back row. Here's back for a beautiful pass to Cardwell. Near side to Pratt. She'll go far deep corner on the tough angle, and it's a point, and the kill, 23-20. And three straight points by Cedarville off of the timeout by d and &E. And six straight points um, since the last timeout. Uh, from Coach Walters. Look out. Barkley down the hammer of the way, 24-20, set point. And Danny cannot stop this momentum. They're out of timeouts. Cedarville needs one more point to get the set. Shelton rifles it across. Here's the set to Craig. She'll put it across herself, and that will be well done by the setter. A sophomore from Louisiana, 24-21. Still serving, set point. And it will be Haley Murray checking in to serve for Davis and Elkins. Looking for a good pass right here. Becker handles it beautifully. Cardwell outside to Pratt, down and good. 
25-21, off the pass of Becker to Cargill. Chrissy Pratt delivers her 10th kill of the match, and the Lady Jackets now lead, commanding lead, two sets to zero, 25-17, and now taking set number two by a final score of 25-21. to Well, Cedarville did exactly what they had to do. When they, when they were down 20-17, to and they had to get eight points, versus just five, they were able to get eight points while DNE only got one point. Um, so they came out of that timeout and played really, really strong. Um, you're gonna see this right here is a great serve actually. And uh, Cedarville passed the ball right into the hands of Cardwell. Cardwell was able to use whatever offense. I love the middle going up and attacking, which allowed us to send it outside uh, without a block. And so it went straight down and Cedarville was able to finish that and finish it with a strong statement. And that's exactly what you want to see happen. Well, you've talked over and over in your coaching career, a beautiful pass right to the setter without the setter even having to move to get to that pass makes so many things move more fluid and smoothly. And that setter ha then has so many options to uh, go to the attackers and get a nice kill, which we saw right there from Cardwell to Pratt. That's absolutely right. It all starts with a uh, good pass. Uh, if you don't have a good passing game, there is no way you can run an offense. And so Cedarville has cleaned that up a lot. They didn't start out real strong in the first set. But right now, they're passing right to their setter's hands, and their setters are giving them the ball, and offense is able to run it. Well, again, I want to remind you that as you are watching here this afternoon, about an eight-minute break between set number two and set number three, maybe take advantage of that time to send us an email. We'd love to hear from you if you're out there watching. It does help us uh, make decisions for future broadcasts. The email, sportsinfo at cedarville.edu, sportsinfo at cedarville.edu. We know we heard from several of you last night. Love to hear from you more here this afternoon. Coming up later today, as we have an opportunity here on Stretch Internet, it'll be the Lady Jackets soccer team at 4.30 taking on Kentucky Wesleyan, and then the Yellow Jacket men at 7 o'clock again taking on Kentucky Wesleyan in GMAC action. But we're going to take a break here as we're between sets. When we come back, we'll have a look at a few of the stat highlights and get you ready for more action. Stay tuned for some features from Cedarville. You're watching Lady Jacket Volleyball here on Stretch Internet. The thing that I am most excited about Cedarville is it provides opportunities for those who want to take them. Athletics at Cedarville are different than at any other university. They are Christ-centered and completely focused on spreading the gospel. We truly do play for a different purpose than many teams, um, and that purpose is to honor and glorify Christ. He gave us these gifts and abilities to step out, whether it be on the soccer pitch or the tennis court, the basketball court. I definitely say just find some friends and just try it. We have everything when it comes to intramurals, whether that's ping pong or tennis or dodgeball or basketball, soccer, everything under the sun. I basically have done them all and I'd say it's a fantastic experience just because you get to meet new people. So it's a, a really cool opportunity for um, a stress reliever but also to have some fun and, and enjoy your time. Throughout the week you get to you have to do work, you have to do homework, you have to go to classes, you have tests to study for. So every once in a while you just get a time to relax, you got to let all your emotions out and it's just very fantastic to have that. In just about every sport the goal is the intramural t-shirt. It's, it's a fun environment, uh, lots of people come out to watch and to play and we get to just go out there and have fun. We all have one focus and that's using our talents that God's given us to bring all the glory to Him. And it's, it's easier when you have a team surrounding you with the same focus. Being a part of the varsity soccer team, it's been an incredible experience. Um, being a part of the uh, brotherhood, the atmosphere. When you travel to other places, you realize how blessed we really are here. It, the facilities are beautiful. Our fields, our courts, uh, truly are a step above most organizations. Um, so we really are blessed here at Cedar Hill uh, for the facilities that we do have. So being at a Christian university really changes the spirit of sports just because it's not only about winning, 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 it's also trying to grow friendships with new people and strengthening your relationship with Christ, which is the ultimate goal. It's special and it's unique and it's something that I feel like I only would have found here at Cedarville.
What are you really looking for when you're searching for a university? A good program? Nice facilities? Solid biblical teaching? Enough training to get you a good job when you graduate? Well, you'll find all of that here at Cedarville. And here's a bonus, the people. You'll be surrounded by a group of like-minded, fun-loving Christians while you're here. Yeah, people like you. Creative, right brain, idea people. People who love what they do and have a passion to make a difference with their lives. To serve a greater purpose. To heed the call as followers of Christ. And as you start to fall in love with this place, and you will, these people you go to class with, they'll become your friends. And as you change from being a follower and start becoming a leader, you'll start to form your own band of brothers where you'll search together to find God's plan for your life. It won't be all fun and games. You'll be challenged. You'll struggle. And sometimes you might even feel like giving up. But it's at those times you'll be even more thankful that you're surrounded by a group of Christians to help keep you going. Because as much of a challenge as these four years will be for you, they'll go by very quickly. Four years of laughter, four years of hard work, four years of memories and feelings that will last a lifetime. It's called the Cedarville Experience, and there's nothing else out there quite like it. Ask our students, talk to our graduates. They'll tell you we have something special going on here at Cedarville University. There are quite a few universities that can say with honesty that they lead the pack in academic reputation, student satisfaction, and outstanding placement results. My alma mater, Cedarville University, is indeed one of them. And don't get me wrong, those things were quite important when it came to getting into the real world. But it was the heart of this place, the part not like the others, that made in me a lifelong impact I still can't forget. It was the heart of this place that you can only grasp if you experience it. Experience Cedarville University at cedarville.edu. My name is Joy McBride. I graduated from Cedarville University in 2010, and I'm the afternoon show host on a Christian radio station called. And welcome back here to the Count Athletic Center. Lady Jack is taking on Davis Nelk and then GMAC Volleyball. Jim and Teresa Clark with you. Here we have a couple of highlights from... Okay, um, that was a great play that we were able to be a witness to, but that's fine. We do have some stats to share with you. One of the things that improved from, from uh, set one to set two was Cedarville's block game. In set one, they only had 2.5 blocks, and in this, uh, in this set, the second set, they were able to have 6.5. Part of that is because uh, they went to a 6-2 system during that set, but the other part is um, d and &E had a better offensive attack coming at them that they were able to, to take down uh, and have... down in set two from set one from a 3-0 to a 2-7 um, and so let's see what happens in this set. Chrissy Pratt leading the way offensively for Cedarville with 10 kills here this afternoon for 
the Senators. It's Devin Sosi leading the way with seven on the front line. Comes a set from Zoe Craig. Right side attack by Sasha Johnson is good for the kill and the point D and E one to nothing. A little conversation going on between uh, uh, Faith and um, I think Abby Shelton, who are part of that block, talking about the timing. Faith Ferris, the freshman middle hitter out of Delton, Michigan, seeing her first action here this afternoon. Shelton on the kill attempt and una unable to keep it in play are the Senators. We are tied at one. Shelton on the serve, goes deep corner. Senators have some trouble, that'll be a double hit call against Alexa Samara, point Lady Jackets. This is Haley Murray on the set, a little two-hand push shot and a wonderful save by Shelton. Now Pratt will just connect and bury that one just to the right of Ellie Drain for the kill. Well, that started with an, a very effective uh, save with a, a pass that came from Abby and she threw her body on the floor, kept the ball in play, and then our, the setter Caldwell was able to make it playable. Great effort. Another serve by Shelton, down to get it is Drain. Here's a quick Attack in the middle by Kayla Godwin, passed and to the setter Cardwell. Barkley partially clipped at the net on the block attempt. Now near side attack, Samara and Cardwell reaching in front of Shelton, sends it out of bounds. Cardwell needs to trust that Abby's behind her. Abby has been picking everything up. She was right there. Abby needs to scream that she's there and communicate. Uh, Carwell stuck her arm out and it sent the ball flying and they're talking about it and they're smiling at each other. They got it. Now serving for the Senators, Kendall Jacobson. Back set to Barkley, going down line. It's going to be just outside the near sideline for the point for the Senators. And now we'll see our first look at freshman Abby Woodard checking in the back row, replacing Abby Shelton. Woodard, Becker, Pratt on the back line to receive the serve of the Senators. Cardwell. Sets it up to Pratt and miss firing on the left hand attack is Chrissy Pratt. A tough play by the setter Cardwell. 4 3 Senators. Becker on the pass to Cardwell. Outside this time, Chrissy Pratt dials that one up and gets the kill. The tie to set up at four points apiece. Again, we've said it before, but that started with a great pass. Um, right into uh, Cardwell's hands. She was able to send it outside and the kill as a result. Becker on the serve. Quick attack from the middle, blocked there by Cricky who has checked in. Now Cardwell right back outside to Pratt who's partially blocked at the net. This one's put across far deep corner will be good. Actually it'll be a point for Cyril on the double hit call against I believe Haley Murray of Davis and Elkins. But you were able to see, um, you were able to see Abby Woodford, Woodford uh, come all the way from the right side of the back line to the left and get her hands on it. That's a great effort by a freshman who just entered the game. Murray near side attack on the set to Sosi, kept in play by the Lady Jackets. Ricky Cricky just sends it over to keep it alive. Woodard steps in for the dig. Cardwell, she'll go outside to Pratt. She winds up and delivers a big kill against the block of Craig and Godwin. And Woodard did a great job. That was a great pass. She was able to move her feet quickly and get under it. I'm impressed with that pass. 6-4 Cedarville, another serve by Becker. Set by Murray, middle attack. Blocked and dug there by Becker and a beautiful tip shot by the middle hitter, Rachel Cricky of Cedarville to make it 7-4. Rachel played real smart ball right there. She was going up and she saw that she was really tight to the, to the net. She didn't have enough room to do a full arm swing. So she looked at the open spot and dinked it down. Cricky 
kill number four on the afternoon and a wide open back line to the left of Woodard get the kill to Devin Sosi of d &E. This will be Kayla Godwin on the serve. Cardwell, tough set right there to Barkley, but she does get it over and the ball will fall out of bounds, touched by Cedarville Point, Davison Elkins. And a touch call will be made by Becker on the honor call to give the point to D&E, 8-5, excuse me, 7-6 Cedarville. And, and the call was made that it was out of bounds, but uh, Angela quickly went over and said, I touched that while it was still in bounds. That's what we call an honor call, where you are totally being honest uh, in your play. And that's a, a great trait that Cedarville has and continues to have in their volleyball program. Chrissy Pratt on the block of the side, slide attempt of Sharice Mitchell for the point for Cedarville. Eight six, they lead it by two. Kristen Reynolds back into the lineup to serve, and that one off the top of the net, but kept in play. Craig with a little right-hand push shot dug by Cedarville. Here's Pratt with a kill attempt, and kept in play by the Senators. Going down line is Sosi, but it's out of bounds. 9-6, a three-point lead for Cedarville. Sometimes your adrenaline just gets the best of you, and that's what happened there. As the Zionese player went up to do a hard swing, she just went a little too uh, far, and it went outside. Again, Sosi from the left side, blocked there by Cricky and Cardwell, just to keep things alive. In play, Cardwell tips it over with her back to the net, kept in play again by d &E. a deep push shot by the Senators. Becker's there to get it. Pratt winds up, but she's gonna be blocked on the right side by Craig and Mitchell of d &E. And d &E played that well. They timed their block perfectly. They've been watching Chrissy Pratt swing all day, and so they uh, finally figured out the timing of her swing, and they were able to block her down. Zoe Craig with the serve, pass by Becker, back set from Cardwell to Pratt, into the net point, Davis Nelkins, now just a one point lead at nine to eight. And you see Mitchell on the d &E side uh, going both directions as a middle hitter, going both directions for the block, and she was very effective on that last one. Short, short serve, Pratt gets there, Cardwell keeps it going. Pratt just rolls it across the net. A little one-hand tip shot kept in play by Cedarville, but nicely done by Mitchell. That will be a point. A little roll shot by Pratt. Give her the kill. And now we see it on DE side where you have a player that sticks their arm out and takes the defense out and touches it and sends it sailing out of bounds, and defense was ready for it. 10-8, Cedarville, Pratt with the serve. Passed up by Ellie Drain, back set by Craig, right side attack by Sosi, blocked out of there and kept in play by Cricky and Shelton. Nicely done by the double block attempt on the left side. There's just something special about a block. When you have an offensive uh, player who's swinging hard and, and playing their game but is shut down right from get-go with a block, it's just hard to rebound emotionally. Oh, that's a beautiful serve right there by Chrissy Pratt. She puts down a big Ace cross court to find space, 12-8, four point lead for Cedarville. Pratt's second ace of the afternoon. She'll go at it again. This time it is passed up on the back line, but Cricky goes up at the top of the net and puts it down. 13-8, Cedarville, a five point lead, and coach Kylie Carrington of d &E will take her first time out, her team trailing by five here in set number three. And, uh, Coach Kylie's seeing that uh, the, this spread with five points right now is getting a little bit too, out of too much ahead. And so that was a good time for a timeout. And so she's trying to stop the momentum that Cedarville has going for them. All right, and so hopefully we're gonna see this. Yep, here we go. This is Chrissy Pratt, she goes up. As she sees a big hole in the uh, back, she's sending it that direction. And then uh, the D&E was able to get under it, sends it over the net. But Rachel Cricky, as you saw, was able to get up and just dink it down and able to get that uh, point. Uh, and that's up a, even when you don't get an ace serve, when you have a hard serve that they ricochet right over to the net, you're able to play it that way. And so well done by Rachel Cricky and Cedarville now leads it 13 to eight. 
Both teams back onto the floor. Action resuming here in set number three. Lady Jackets leading it two sets to zero. Another serve by Chrissy Pratt and exactly what d &E was hoping for after the timeout, a missed serve by Chrissy. And that's why you take timeouts to try to change momentum. It worked that time. Into serve for the Senators, Michaela Touche. Checking in for the first time, sophomore Emily Gewurz out of Ashmore, Illinois. She's on the back line waiting for the serve attempt from Touche, and Gewurz will get it down to her knees on the pass to Cardwell. Shelton skies and gets the kill attempt, and it'll be a kill for Abby, unable to keep it in play was Ellie Dream, 14-9 Cedarville. d and &E does exactly what you're supposed to do. When a new player comes on the court, you welcome them by hitting at them, serving at them. Uh, and Emily was able to get it right in the hands of Chrissy and the offense was able to run. It was a great pass. Faith Ferris on the front line as well with Shelton and Cardwell. Here comes the right side attack by Johnson, partially blocked and kept alive by Ferris and Shelton. Cardwell goes up with the left hand and she'll get the kill. That was a great time for that. Uh, you saw that the defense was on their way out from the middle, and so they were kind of resting on the back of their heels. Uh, Cardwell was able to see that and send it, and uh, uh, send it right down to the middle, and that's a great surprise attack. Cardwell did that three times last night against Aldous and Broadus. That's her first kill this afternoon. A left hand push shot kept in play. This is Johnson on the right side. There's Gewirth to her knees for the dig. Now a roll shot from the back line. A tough play for a six foot one. Rachel Cricky into the net. 15-10, Cedarville leading by five. And that's a hard adjustment when you're used to being on the front row and you're trying to make a back attack and you don't know exactly how far from the 10 foot line you are. And so you're kind of thinking that in the back of your mind and you're not following through correctly with your arm swing. Shelton gets the set from Cargo. Blocked right back down by Johnson and Godwin of the Senators. Another serve from Ellie Drain. Again, very high, high, right at the 10-foot line. There's the works to step in to get it. Now Cardwell outside to Shelton, and missed timing right there on the hit attempt was Abby. 15-12, just a three-point lead for Cedarville now. Drain will go to Becker on the pass to Cardwell. Goes up again with the left hand, and she'll get another kill. Beautifully played by the junior setter, Christian Cardwell, 16-12, Cedarville. And Cardwell really had no option there. The, the pass was right at the net, and she went up and acted like she was going to set it, but she saw that she was probably going to not be able to time it well, so she sent it over herself, and it worked. And give Christian Cardwell her second ace of the match. Number 19 on the season, 17-12. Lady Jackets has Ashley Gould has checked in, a freshman Outside hitter from New Glarus, Wisconsin, wearing jersey number five. And another ace for Cardwell, back to back, 18-12. Now Lady Jackets pulling a little bit further ahead of DNE. Another serve now for Cardwell. Tough play right there on the set from Craig to Johnson in 19-12. Now things kind of falling apart for DNE. Just six points away from dropping the match to Cedarville. Cardwell sends that set over. And that will be another point as the communication not working on the Senators' side of the net, 20 to 12. And Coach Carrington has nothing to do but take her second and final timeout. Her team now finding themselves just five points away from suffering a 3 0 defeat here at Cedarville this afternoon. Nice to see Kristen Carwell's um, ace serving game back on. Uh, she got, uh, she was very, you, you thought of that with her, you remember her, she was very effective with that last season. And so it's, it was, it's really fun to see that back in action uh, during this set. Cedarville does not have much to talk about. They huddled and got out of their, um, uh, out of their huddle and back on the court very quickly, which kind of rushes D&E to do the same. And so um, we're out with just uh, less than half of the time you're allotted for a timeout. Cardwell will serve it. Her team up 20 to 12. Goes deep middle of the floor. Here's the set from Craig. Near side attack. Blocked down by Ferris and Gould. 
Actually did not clear the net point Cedarville, but the block was there. 21-12 is our score. Hard to see that when the official is kind of blocking our way, but uh, it looked like the block touched it, but evidently not. Card will again give her another ace going right at Alexa Samara for a third ace of this set for, Cedar, for Cedarville's Cardwell. And, and Alexa, number 23, going out right now, but um, she just needs to extend her arms and pull them up. Uh, she's under the ball. She's just sending it straight to the court. Actually, that might be a serve number four for Cardwell. Going for another one there, but it is passed up by Touche. Here's a slide attack. Cardwell down to get it. And it's going to be Ashley Gould, the left-hander, going cross court. Kept in play by the centers. And Johnson, just an awkward attempt right there to get it across the net, gives the point to Cedarville. I'll tell you what I like. I like that you have a freshman that comes in and gets a little bit of action in Ashley Gould. And uh, Abby's right over congratulating her on that kill. Roll shot put across by Jacobson, and that'll be a kill for Jacobson. Becker went down to the floor to try and get it, but it is a 10-point lead still nonetheless, 23-13 Cedarville. Haley Murray serving for the Senators. High, high floater back to Becker on the pass to Carville. Quick middle attack by Faith Ferris and gives the freshman middle hitter a big kill right there. Well and done sure, by Faith. And I'm sure that's what Coach Walter saw Faith do in high school, and that's why she's wearing the Cedarville uniform this year as a freshman. That was a great kill. Match point. The ball in the hands of Abby Shelton, 24-13. Cedarville net ball just off the back line on a miss serve, 24-14. Still match point coming. Tenth miss serve this afternoon for Cedarville. Here comes the serve from the Senators. There's the pass from Becker to Cardwell. Where is she going to go? She's going to go outside to Pratt. And she will deliver the big kill to seal the deal here this afternoon. 25-14 in set number three. The Lady Jackets sweep the Senators out of the Cowan Athletic Center. 25-17, 25-21, and 25-14 to move to 6-8 and eight on the year and 2-0 and oh in the GMAC. The Senators will fall to 1-10, excuse me, 1-11 and 0-2. And oh and as we look at a replay of the final play, Coach Clark's Chrissy Pratt going up to get it. And here you see the pass is put going right into Carwell's hands. She sends it over to Pratt. Pratt gets way up and dings right down it goes. And uh, defense tried, but they were not able to be successful in getting it to their center. And thus the match point goes down on Cedarville's side and the victory is ours. Match high, 15 kills on the afternoon for the sophomore Chrissy Pratt. She had 13 kills last night, but uh, all in all, some good effort here. Team, both teams kind of struggled to get things going here on this Saturday afternoon, but the Lady Jackets do prevail and they keep their home winning streak going. They have now won five, all five of their home matches, their th fourth straight on this home stand. So is that exactly what you would expect from the Lady Jackets to just dominate here at home. Cedarville's got to keep this winning streak going. They've got to keep their um, wits about them, as we used to say. Uh, they've adjusted some things. They did some different things. They threw in different players uh, during this match, but they also went from a 5-1 to a 6-2. So th they've got some reorganization. They've got the same things to look at. They've got to uh, uh, see how they're going to change or, or what they're going to keep and what they're not going to keep. D&E, on the other hand, they had their, their best hitter go down hurt before this match, and so they're going to go back, and they've got to do a whole new group of uh, who they go to. They've got to adjust um, their defense. They've got to do a, an awful lot of, um, of changes in their program before they see their next match, which is going to come up pretty soon for them. And so both teams are, have much to work on as they leave this match and uh, look at their stats and look at film and start seeing some things that they need to do Monday morning or afternoon, sorry. Mm -hmm. well, let's look uh, briefly at some of the statistical highlights here. First of all, for the Senators, they were led on the offensive end by Devin Sosi, eight kills on the afternoon, 16 assists from their setter, Zoe Craig, and on the back line, nine digs by Kendall Jacobson to le lead the way in that category. The Center's attacking percentage of just 7% as we look down below for another replay. Here's a great play that happened. You'll see the ball goes right up and look at that. The height of her that she got so, she soared 
she got up and had hang time. She was able to get down on it and look at it. Here's the perfect set and able to get in deep to the defense. And she actually hit it between two defensive players and they were not able to communicate and get it up. So that was another great play that we were able to see this And afternoon. you always like to say, welcome to the big leagues. Faith Ferris yes. as a freshman. <laughs> brings down the big kill. And let's quickly look at the uh, statistical leaders here this afternoon for Seville. As we said, Chrissy Pratt, a match high 15 kills, also in double figures. Junior Abby Shelton on the front line with 10 kills. Christian Cardwell handed out 26 assists, as well as delivering four service aces. And on the back line, again, Angela Becker leading the way with 20 digs. And Rachel Cricky, five blocks at the net. And the Lady Jackets hitting at 26%. And the blocking stat, eight and a half blocks this afternoon compared to just two for the Senators. Lady Jackets win at 25-17, 25-21, 25-14. And uh, again, uh, you were able to see Cedarville adjust to whatever was coming at their game, whatever the coach was doing and changing things up. You got to see some uh, freshmen on the court that haven't seen a whole lot of play time. They stepped up. Not one of them let the, the, uh, the climate dip on the court, and that's exactly what a coach wants to see. Um, d and &E, uh, came in with their best hitter injured, and so they were in a mental game trying to adjust to a lot different game than they're used to, and so they had a communication that they had to talk about, and they had to get a rhythm going, and at times they had it, but they consistently weren't able to keep it. Well, I want to remind you our next broadcast, it'll be a non-conference home game coming up on this coming Tuesday, September 29th, University of Southern Indiana. The Screaming Eagles out of the GLBC will be here in town. 7 o'clock will be the start of that. If you can't come out in person, we would love to have you join us here on Stretch Internet. That's Lady Jack is against Southern Indiana this coming Tuesday. Our thanks to a great crew here this afternoon as we work through getting resources and more camera people and replays, but uh, great work by our director and Professor Jim Craigle here this afternoon and two great young men, Andy Carr and Noah Taylor running the cameras. We appreciate the great work from those broadcast and digital media majors and uh, we look forward to having them in just a few hours as we work a couple uh, soccer games as well. But uh, thanks for joining us with us this afternoon. My thanks to Teresa Clark. I'm Jim Clark. Thanks for watching Lady Jacket Volleyball here on Stretch Internet. <laughs>